Good morning. My name is Sharon Lipsch. I'm the Highway Superintendent for Walsh County, and I have been with Walsh County for 22 years. I started in this capacity as the Administrative Officer for the Highway Department, and in 2008 moved over to the Highway Superintendent position. I received my um, civil engineering degree from the University of North Dakota in 2011. Um, so that, there's, there's a little story about myself. Um, I welcome you to the County Officials Academy. I'm obviously gonna be speaking about the Highway Department's responsibilities today. Now, just to give you some background, um, highway engineers or highway superintendents um, depends on whether or not you have that engineering degree or not. Um, there's many differences between counties. Some counties have an engineer, some counties have a highway superintendent, and some counties have both. And there are a few counties out there that still operate with county commissioners running districts within their counties. Um, some counties take care of just county roads, like that's what Walsh County does. Um, but there are some counties I know that take care of county and township roads. Um, there are some counties that have no bridges. There's some counties that have a few, and then there's us in the Red River Valley that have a lot of bridges. Now, what do we do? Well, the public knows us for blading roads, removing snow, repairing bridges, and putting up road signs. But the public also gets very confused about the level of road authority. So, you know, st a state highway um, versus a county road versus a township road. They, they tend to call the highway department office for whichever road they're having an issue with. And so a lot of times we need to figure out what road they're initially talking about so we can direct them to the correct place. Now we here in Walsh County, we keep a listing of all the phone numbers for all the township officers. And then all, we obviously also have the contact information for the Department of Transportation. So we give those phone numbers right out to our taxpayers so they don't have to try to figure out where they need to call next. Now funding for highway departments is, is in two ways. We levy property taxes, and then there's also highway tax distribution. Now we are all very well informed about what property taxes are. And so I will spend a little bit of time explaining what highway tax distribution is. But those are collections that the state collects. And based on the collections of motor vehicle registrations, fuel taxes, use taxes, and special fuels excise tax. And then they distribute that monthly to counties and cities. And the authority for that is under North Dakota Century Code 5427-19. Now, counties in the fourth quarter of 2020, through the fourth quarter of 2020, counties collected a little over $7 million. Now, if you use those road mile numbers that we talked about in the previous slides, that basically equates to $129.16 per mile. Now townships collected a little over $5 million and that equates to $128.98 per mile. The statewide average costs for graveling are $9,500 to $18,200 per mile. And that is dependent basically upon the supplier's price and then how far it needs to be hauled within that county. Some counties don't have gravel in their counties at all. And so they're hauling it from neighboring counties. Um, chip sealing ranges from 30,000 to 35,000 per mile. Paving ranges from 100,000 to 110,000 per inch per mile. So that's really dependent on how thick of a pavement is needed for each particular road. Box culverts on average are around $400,000 and that's for a mid-sized box culvert. You know, they, if you need a really large box, those can be upward of $600,000. Bridge replacements, range from $175 per square foot to $225 per square foot. Now, if you're talking a 30, 40 foot bridge, you're probably looking at upwards of a million dollars by the time you pay for the construction and engineering of that bridge. So you can see that there is definitely a cost gap in the amount of money highway departments are collecting versus what we have to pay to, to get our job done. Now, what do highway departments do? 
North Dakota Century Code 1131 outlines the powers and the duties of highway departments and, or, or highway superintendents and engineers. North Dakota Century Code 2405 regulates how we perform those duties. So we'll talk about each of them now. Um, Century Code 113103, the powers and duties, um, it's the, the duty to design or make plans for county and township roads. Now, counties handle that differently. Um, some counties hire consulting engineers and other counties have staff that can design and, and stamp those plans. Um, I would say a majority of the counties in North Dakota probably hire um, consulting engineers to design their roads. It is also their duty to come up with a comprehensive plan. So what does your five or 10 year plan look like for road construction and bridge construction? It is also your duty to, to keep a complete record of cost and expenditures. And also in doing that, you need to make sure and, and you're responsible for all your accounts, all your claims and demands for expenditures. You have to go through those expenditures carefully and make sure that you are spending taxpayer money um, where it's due and not inadvertently paying something incorrectly. Powers and duties continued are keep a complete inventory of all equipment, supervise the use of that equipment, and then keep track of your materials within your county. And you're, you know, a big job for our highway superintendents is to employ and supervise all personnel engaged in county road operations. And, you know, part of the job that we don't really necessarily like very much is, you know, terminating such employment when required in the best interest of the county. So what offices do, do highway departments work with? They work with commissioners, the auditor and the treasurer's office, the county recorder and the tax director, dispatch, emergency management and the sheriff, state's attorney, human resources, and the water board, and um, also IT or GIS folks. Now, the board of county commissioners, they set policy, right? They set our policy, and then we, as highway superintendents, try to enforce that policy to the best of our ability. Um, we work with the county commissioners to develop a road and bridge plan. They approve our budget. Um, we provide them monthly reports of what is happening and occurring in the highway department. Um, we have portfolio commissioners here, and so I have a commissioner that I can call if something comes up, and, you know, I try really hard to always keep that commissioner informed. I never want them to be surprised at a county commission meeting when I'm talking about something, and the county commissioners also approve contracts. The county auditor and the county treasurer, um, two very important people that we work with. Um, the county auditor, we work with to put together our budget. Um, we balance monthly with them according to our um, budget, and we work with them to put insurance on our equipment and keep our inventory up to date. They pay our bills for us, and they have the employee benefits um, person that, that we send new hires to, or if our current employees have questions about their benefit coverage, we send them to the auditor's office. And they collect all of our sealed bids for us. So when we are bidding out certain projects or materials or things like that, the sealed bid bids go to the county auditor. Now the treasurer, we deposit our funds. They give us monthly financial reports so we can balance on the money side of things. Um, how much money do we carry forward each month? And then they provide us a lot of landowner information. If we need to know who owns a certain quarter or something like that, we can go to their office and look that information up. Um, we can also do that with a county recorder's office. Obviously, we can research deeds for right-of-way, figure out property owners that way as well. Um, they record our right-of-way and easements for us, and um, they also are the keeper of plats that we sometimes need to go look at when we're looking at a road project. The tax director helps us out with comparable sales, land valuations, and appraisals, and that goes back to acquiring right-of-way or easements that we need to do for a road or bridge construction project. Emergency management and dispatch, we work closely with them when it comes to flooding and road closures. Um, if there's ever after hours calls, typically people know to call dispatch about a road issue or something like that. And then they can relay that information to us. Um, if there's ever snow events or rain events and, and they develop the hazard mitigation plan for, for counties. 
The sheriff helps us out in, in many, many ways, probably more so than what's listed here. But if there's ever a landowner or a drainage dispute, sometimes we can call them to investigate that. We um, help sometimes with air patrol cars. And sometimes, you know, when people park equipment and things, installed cars on roads, um, our sheriff is really good about helping us out, figuring out who owns that vehicle, making contact to get that vehicle moved if it's creating a problem for us. Um, the state's attorney is our legal counsel. They review our policies, they give us legal opinions, and they help um, in many, many ways. Um, they help with right of way acquisitions. Um, really a great resource for us in, in figuring out contracts and things like that, um, and really provide us the legal basis for what we do. Um, we have a human resource person that's contracted for Walsh County, and if you're lucky to have your own, good for you, um, but they help us with employee issues, they help us with hiring and firing and Title VI compliance, um, help us with our policy books, things like that. Um, the Water Board, they help us with um, drainage complaints, drain tile permits, flowage easements, landowner disputes when it comes to drainage issues and legal drains. Now IT or GIS, you know, we, a lot of counties have um, all their parcels um, parceled out and have pa parcel maps available. Um, so they kind of keep those updated and update our computers. And we do a lot of mapping in Walsh County and I'm sure many other highway departments do as well. And so those people can really help you with those things. Um, as far as your member associations, um, county engineers have two associations you can be part of, the North Dakota Association of Counties and Engineers. I've listed that website here for you. Um, they meet at the annual conference in October, and then we have our own annual conference held the end of January each year, and typically then there's a business meeting there. It's really great networking and those relationships you build with other highway superintendents um, can really help you do your job just that much better. And then there's also a National Association of County Engineers. That conference is held every April typically, and the, the, the web address is listed there. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for listening to me about talking about highway departments, and I appreciate you tuning in.